Hi, I'm PJ Metavish. Welcome back to another DC tutorial. This one we're doing another uh, section C surface geometry question. So this is the 2012 C3, as you see there. So don't going to read through it. Uh, we'll just go straight to section A. So part A: surfaces A and C have a pitch of 60 degrees, and surface B and D have a pitch of 40 degrees. Draw the elevation and plan of surfaces A, B, C, and D. So it's very specific in the question, it says just the surfaces A, B, C, and D. So do that, forget about E, forget about F for the time being, all right? And you have your scale is one is to 100, and you have um, all the measurements there. So probably start off with the plan, seems to have the most amount of uh, measurements there. Bring them up to the elevation, and I'll fast forward through this now, okay? Okay, so that's part A done. So we have surfaces A and B, C and D put in, in the elevation plan. And we've drawn as much of them in strong as we can. So we can't put in the rest of B here until we have surface E and so on, and surface F. So, okay, well, we could put it in, but let's just keep it the question. So now part B, it says, draw the, ele draw the elevation plan of the dormer window E and determine the hydral angle between the surfaces B and E. Okay, so use your, see the construction lines coming across here on the plan, use those measurements, put in surface E in the plan and in the elevation. And then I'll fast forward through that, then we'll go through getting the heater angle. Okay, so that's surface E put in. Just a little quick recap on that. This is 20 mil, 25 mil. It gave you your point there right below where the two uh, surfaces here meet, B and C. That's your center point there. Then our base point here gave us the height there. It was a parallel line to the XY line, so draw it straight across and that gives you the distance there. So it said put in the window and then also determine the heat of the surfaces B and E. <coughs> so this is surface B. That surface, they might put a bit of shading on B now. So we need to find the teeter angle between surface B and surface C. So in the elevation, this is surface B, that surface E, over here in plan. So our line in section is this line here, okay? And we have the same line there in elevation. So we have a full surface here now. This your line in section is not parallel to takes one in either of the views, even though you do have an edge view of surface B there. So what we need to do is we need to do a first auxiliary view perpendicular to it. And you can go from either view, depending on where you have most room down here. So I'm gonna go down here to bottom left. And when you were doing the surface, so obviously you project down all three points to this one, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six points on surface B. Now you can save yourself a bit of time rather than projecting all of them down and maybe extend the line of section up to the surface to cut off that back point there. So you only have one, two, three uh, points on it, okay? But I'm gonna put in all of them just so I can shade in the full surface again here, all right? So we're gonna go perpendicular to the line of section. We're gonna project an auxiliary view and we're doing surfaces B and E, so I'm gonna put a data line right in underneath there to give me better room. And I'm also gonna label the points, make sure we get them right.
So I had a bit of a mistake there on that auxiliary view. The height from the datum line to four, five, and six, I marked them up from the two tree line here. So I had a big error there on the view. But when it's marked incorrectly here, you see your surface E sitting over uh, surface B, surface B there in red, surface E in blue. Your line section is 0, 5. This is 0, this is 0, 0.5. So this is now a true length. And if you do a point view of that, of that true length line there, so look in parallel and project parallel to it, you'll see the surfaces B and E as edges. Okay, and that'll give you a dihedral angle. So we're going to project out another auxiliary view parallel to that true length line out here to the right hand side. Put in our x1, y1, or x2, y2. You get your length from the x, y line back. So we might put in a datum line around there, 0.2, and we put in our view. So we'll fast forward a bit through this. So that's part B finished. We have now an edge view of the surface B, an edge view of surface E. See there are the two highlighted colors, red and blue, and your dihedral angle in between them. Now it doesn't matter if you determined that this was the dihedral angle, if you put indicated there your um, angle, it doesn't matter which one you pick, because you found two edge views, so you've determined your dihedral angle on the two surfaces. Now part C, it says develop surface E. So we're doing a development of surface E, which means we want to draw that flat now. And as you see here, 0.5 and 6, or line 5 and 6 at the back there, and 1 is closer to you at the, or 0, I should say, sorry, is closer to you at the front. So it's sloped to the front like that. All right, and 5 and 6 at the back. So it's at an angle. So neither of these are true shapes. Okay, what is a true shape though, or true length, is line 5, 6. Okay, the line 5, 6 is a true length because it is parallel to the XY line in plan elevation. So we might develop it up here in, ele in the elevation because we have a bit of room. Uh, the line 0, 5 is in a true length or 0, 6. Okay, but where do we have 0, 5 as a true length? Okay, we found that down here in our first exit review by going perpendicular to it. So the distance from 0 to 5 here is a true length. So we'll get that in our compass and we'll mark it up in the elevation. So somewhere along this arc, it's going to be 0 0.0. And if we are developing it, we're drawing a flat space, so we're going to rotate it, all right? So we're rotating it around the axis 5, 6. So we're rotating it from there to be flat, all right? And if you're just rotating it up like that, 0, 0.0 would be directly above the original 0, 0.0 here. The true 0, 0.0 would be directly above it. So let's project 0, 0.0 up to it hits our arc. So therefore, that has to be our 0, 0.0. Join that back to five to get the true length. And then zero to six has to be true length here as well. Okay, so that's the true shape of E. Now the last part, it says the hedral angle between surfaces D and F is 120 degrees. Complete the projections of the structure. So we can put in some of some of it so we know it's starting at this point here and we need to mark in the other 25 mil down here and we know from the elevation that if we bring 0, 0.0 straight across it's going to give us where the surface starts there or ends I should say so that's a point on the surface from that straight down Okay, so we need to find, uh, to draw the, we need to draw the elevation of it, okay? And they've told you the hedral angle between these two surfaces is 120 degrees. So if we look at our line of intersection between them, which is our line here, 
Okay, we need to find a true length of that line. Just like we did with uh, the original part here. We have a line in section, we find the true length of it, we go parallel, we see our dihedral angle. We're working backwards with this one where this is our line in section. Okay, so it's at an angle here. All right, and then the line in section in plan, that's an edge view of it along here, but that's not parallel to silent, so we don't have a true length. So we need to project perpendicular to it, just like this one here, to find the true length of it. Okay, so now fast forward through this, we're just doing uh, auxiliary elevation, projecting perpendicular to that um, line section. And what I am going to do is put in, so rather than like the last one, I projected all the points just to show the surface. Rather than doing all the points of surface D, I'm just going to save a bit of time and cut a large chunk of that surface D off. So now what we have, we still have a plane there that's at the same angle as D, but it's just like the four-point uh, triangle system, or triangular, or four-point coordinate geometry question, where you have only one point here in surface D, two points similar to both on one point in surface F. Okay, so project that auxiliary view up here to the right. So what we have here now is we have our line section is from this point here to the point at the top there, from the height here, from the elevation. So join them together. You also have that point and surface D's on the ground line here. They join together and that cuts back up. So we can say, I put in strong anyways just to show it. So our line of section is from this point to that point. This is our true length. Now we're missing, this is what we're going to find. We're going to find the height at this point here. We don't have that. But what we do is, what we do have is the dihedral angle. So if we project our second auxiliary view down, view down parallel to the true length, put a damp line around here just to get, um, save us a bit of room. Pull in your 120 degrees and it will show you the height for this point here. Okay, so we'll go through that. So what we have here now is we have a line that represents an edge view that represents surface D. We have the point, uh, or the line section here is a point view. And we know our dihedral angle is 120 degrees. So let's put in our dihedral angle here. So the point view of the line section has to be at your center of your protractor. So we'll start here at zero and go to 120. Now, how do I know where to stop for surface F? If you look at what we did here, normally you get the distance from your X, Y line back to that point there, because that will be the distance then in this view, all right? But we put in a datum point. So right here is on our X2, Y2. So therefore, that 120 degrees would stop at X2, Y2. This point here is the point we're looking for. If you project that back, to where it hits the line, projecting it back from the original view, that would be the height for it for point F. And remember, this is an auxiliary elevation, so by bringing this back here and finding where it hits its projection line from the original plan, this height will be true in the original elevation as well. So once you find that height, mark it in the original elevation and finish the elevation. Okay, so just a quick recap on that. You want to find, you're given the dihedral angle between the two surfaces, so by projecting perpendicular to the line section, which is this line here, you found the true length of it. By projecting parallel to that, we could find the edge view surface D, which was given to you, because remember we cut off all these points and just drew a line down here, so it was this lamina here, this triangle. That was surface D, we knew the dihedral angle was 120 degrees. Where did surface F stop? It stops at the distance from the x1 y1 back 
Okay, but we put in a data mine. Therefore, at this point here, which we're looking for, has to be on the X2Y2. So that was a 120 degree line. We cut the X2Y2. That gave us the final point for the surface F projected back. It has to hit the line being projected up here from F, because that's where the point is. This is an auxiliary elevation, therefore this height is also true in the original elevation. So find your height there for that point, step it off the XY line up to the elevation, and that was surface F finished. So that is the question finished. And as you see here, this was another request. So as always, I hope this helps. Uh, if it did, leave a like, and we'll see you in the next one.